Hello, lovely humans. Jen Foxbot here. I'm so excited for this episode of Math Mondays because guess what? We are summarizing everything that we've learned about electrodynamics so far. So if this was a semester course in college, we would kind of be wrapping up at, at this point and you'd be getting ready to take your final. Ooh, so scary. No, it's okay. You got it. So we are going to look at Maxwell's equations and read them to understand what they are telling us and plus the force equation for electrodynamics. And then we will wrap up with a fun look at how this applies to light. Ooh, because light is an electromagnetic wave. What? Mind blown. So many fun things in physics. Okay, cool. So here we go. I'm going to grab my handy dandy piece of chalk and we are going to write Maxwell's equations. To be fair, he only made a small correction to one of them, but he did kind of smush them together. So, all right, fair enough. Um, I'm gonna move that down a little bit. Okay, so first we have Gauss's law, which is that the divergence or how much the electric field spreads out and how strong it is, is dependent on this constant one over epsilon naught times rho, the charge density, AKA the more charges you have, the stronger the electric field is. Cool, that makes sense. And the divergence of the magnetic field is zero always. Then we have Faraday's law, which tells us that, oh, hey, what's up? The electric field does have a curl component or some rotational component if there is a changing magnetic field. Hey, thanks, Faraday. Okay, and number four, the curl or the swirly part of the magnetic field is due to currents or moving charges. Or, as Maxwell discovered, um, if you have a, an electric field that changes over time. Um, so this one is actually Ampere's law with a correction or a fix from Maxwell. And then we also have our force equation, which is equal to uh, uh, the charge times uh, the electric field plus V cross B, where V is the velocity of the charge. Okay, so these five equations summarize all of the classical theoretical electrodynamics. Um, with one caveat that there are boundary conditions that we haven't really applied here. Um, and so, for example, you would need to keep um, the fact that the electric and magnetic fields drop to zero the farther away you go from the source charges or the source currents. Um, but you can really derive most of the things that you will need in electrodynamics um, for example, the continuity equation, which is the mathematical expression for conservation of charge. Um, if you take the divergence of number four, you will end up with um, del dot j equals um, negative d rho dt. And the reason is del dot um, uh, del cross b goes to zero due to the math law. Um, you end up with del mu naught del dot j plus um, mu naught epsilon naught d dt of del dot e, and then you replace del dot e with this, um, and you solve for j, the constants cancel out, and you end up with um, this negative d rho dt. Try it for yourself if that was a little bit fast of an explanation, um, which it probably was, but yay, a little homework. Okay, so um, in this form, we can see how the electric and magnetic fields are produced. So in this case, the electric field is produced by charges. Cool, that makes sense. Or by a changing magnetic field. Super cool. And then the magnetic field is produced either by moving charges or by currents or by a changing electric field. Um, so uh, da, 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 da. one thing that I want to leave you with is that the author of my book, David Griffiths, prefers a slightly different form, um, which I will show you and we'll talk about why. 
Um, so in this case, we're going to move all of the fields over to the left side. So we have plus um, dbdt equals zero. Um, and then this one's a little bit harder to fix. So I'll just rewrite it. Um, or not fix, but we're moving it around to get some different insights. Yay. Okay. E D T equals mu naught j. So in this format, we have all of the fields on the left side and all of the sources on the right side. Um, and so uh, this really emphasizes that electromagnetic fields are due to charges and currents, and that's it. That's all we've got on the right side. Charges and currents are what give rise to all electric and magnetic fields, regardless of how complicated your situation is. Um, to be fair, it gets really complicated really quickly, as we found when we were looking at polarization, because you have, uh, once you have these kind of things that are moving around, they, they induce new electric fields and et cetera, et cetera. But all that is to say, these are the only two sources of electric and magnetic fields. So Maxwell's equations tell us how charges produce fields, and the force law tells us how fields affect charges. That's it. Boom. QED. We're done forever. Okay. Okay. But I want to end with a really fun last tidbit that starts to get into um, the wave aspects of electrodynamics. Um, so like I mentioned, this is classical electrodynamics. This happened before uh, physicists really discovered that particles are waves and waves are particles and everything that we thought we knew was a lie. Well, not everything. Uh, but the, the more you zoom in to particles, the more they don't really behave like particles and they smoosh around with waves and things like that. Um, so so I want to leave you with this really cool tidbit. Um, I might have mentioned before how um, electric and magnetic fields are really one and the same, um, and that uh, light is a self-propagating electromagnetic wave. <gasps> so cool. So how do we actually know that, and can we solve some stuff to get some information about that? Yeah, we can. So we are going to do a little bit of manipulation on Maxwell's equations to get the velocity um, of a wave that would be self-propagating. Okay, so what we're going to do is use a little math trick where we have del cross del cross some, uh, some vector a, which is going to simplify to, oh my gosh, del cross del dot a minus del squared a. Oh, what's that? Okay, so we are going to do that to equation three and equation four. Okay, and I hope that I have enough space here. I am going to erase the force equation. Um, so first we're going to do number three. Okay, so del cross del cross e. Ah, I tried to do a vector sign in the and the closed bracket at the same time. Didn't quite work. Okay, so that equals um, del, del dot e. Oh, I forgot to mention. Okay, so where does light travel? In a vacuum. Well, I guess through everything. But we are going to ask um, what happens when we have electric and magnetic fields in a vacuum, aka um, when rho equals zero and when j equals zero. This is a critical piece of the equation. Okay, so minus del squared e. Okay, and since we apply this to one side of the equation, we have to apply it to the other. Um, for simplicity's sake, we're gonna go back to the original form of the equations, um, equals this plus that. Um, but do keep in mind that this is gonna go to zero since there's no charges. Um, so then we do, on the other side, we do del cross, um, negative dB dt, and then we can bring this in, so we're going to get negative d dt del cross b, and we want to get rid of all of the magnetic field terms, and so we're going to replace it with this equation. Um, this is zero, boop, boop, boop. and so what we're going to get is 
negative d dt of da, 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 um, mu naught epsilon naught de dt. And this simplifies to negative mu naught epsilon naught d squared e dt. And so now we have these two pieces equal this piece. This is zero. And so we end up with negative del squared e, oopsies, that's a vector sign, not a square, equals this. Um, and so the negatives cancel. Boom. Okay, so that's equation number one. Whew. And we're going to do the same thing to del cross b. Um, so del cross del cross b equals our little math equation, del of del dot b. Oh, that's easy peasy. That one goes to zero also. I love when that happens. Okay, minus del squared b. Um, and then again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do del cross uh, the right side of the equation, del cross mu naught epsilon naught de dt equals mu naught epsilon naught uh, d dt del cross e. And again, we want to get rid of all of the e terms and just get it in terms of the magnetic field. Um, so we're going to replace it with this negative uh, rate of change of the magnetic field. So we end up with mu naught, epsilon naught. It's a negative, so we toss the negative out. Um, d dt of db dt. Hey, okay, this is cool. We're getting there. Negative mu naught, epsilon naught, d squared, b dt squared. Okay, and then we get these two pieces equal to each other. So, whew, all right, we get, we're going to move all of that over here. Del squared b, this piece, so there's a negative there, equals negative mu naught epsilon naught d squared b dt squared. Boom, and the negatives cancel again. Whew, okay, not too bad, not too bad. Hang, hang in there with me. Okay, we're going to get rid of a lot of this other stuff and just focus on these two. Boom, wow. Okay, so... From classical, um, from the, from wave, <laughs> from wave stuff, while wow, my brain is fried, um, from, from basically like the 3D, um, let me look at my notes because I totally just spaced, the 3D wave equation is what it's called officially, um, is, uh, this del squared F, where F is some general function, equals one over V. Um, v squared, the velocity of the wave, times um, second partial derivative of our function with respect to time. Hey, that's like the same thing, right? Look at that. How convenient that other people have done all this work for us. Um, and so this is why people are like, why does pure math matter? Well, because people come up with these things and then you're like, hey, look at that. I can apply it. Um, it also some people also love the fact that pure math just exists, and that's fair. It doesn't need an application, but it also can be useful. Um, <laughs> the two are not mutually exclusive. Okay, so whew, getting ahead of myself here, um, we will notice that this term, 1 over v squared, hey, what's up with that? Um, that's basically, um, both of those are, are well, constants, I guess. Um, these are in this case. And so we can solve for the velocity of this wave by setting um, 1 over v squared equal to mu naught epsilon naught. And we solve for v and we get uh, square root of 1 over mu naught epsilon naught. <gasps> These are constants. If you look them up um, and you put them in this equation, you will get uh, 2, 9, 9, 8, 6, 3, Whoop, 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 whoop. 380, did I just do that right? 0.47 meters per second, meters per second, um, aka 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Whoa, so cool. So that is the velocity of light. And now we're like, yeah, of course it is. But I want to blame Maxwell for this. Um, or give credit to Maxwell, however you put it. Uh, can't totally remember, but when this was first discovered, it blew folks' minds. They were like, wait a second, light 
is an electromagnetic wave. <laughs> Just like that. Yeah, this revolutionized things. Um, and it came out of these equations from classical electrodynamics. Look at that. So cool. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm gonna leave it there for now. I hope that this was helpful in your study of physics. Um, please let me know if there are other topics in electrodynamics that you would like me to cover in the future. Um, can't promise how quick I will get to them, but I will add them to the list. All right, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time, friends. Bye.